Man, one thing that you have been able to do is you've been able to bring science to a lot of people that usually wouldn't watch science television on a Sunday night. Were you surprised to see how many like young people, teenagers, young adults, really, really be captured by this? Cost? I think I've always I've known for most of my professional career that there was an underfed hunger, yeah. a curiosity that existed in that demographic in the teen, twenty-something, thirty-something uh, age group because I saw them on the internet, and that. That energy, you can feel that on the internet. What we didn't know, what we hoped would happen and did happen, but we were not sure, is that on Sunday night, you'd had multiple generations of people sitting on the same couch, watching the same program at the same time. And that just doesn't happen anymore. Everybody's got their separate medium through which they watch their show. And families, the television watching has become a fragmented experience in modern times rather than the family bonding experience that it once was. So we've come to learn that Cosmos served as this, the grandma and the kid and the young and the grandkids. Everyone is on the couch, staying, their kids staying up late watching Cosmos. You're not gonna, if they're watching Cosmos, you're not going to send them to bed. No, no you keep them up, yeah, of course. Uh, you know, people are devastated it's done, obviously, because, but people don't realize it's not like a regular show. You guys can't go out for five minutes and film, you know, new episodes. Are you kind of sad it's done? What's kind and next, is there going to be some more episodes in the yeah, future? We, we've been asked that, and that's I, I, it's hard for me to answer that because I'm still recovering. <laughs> <laughs> right? It was a long time of your life. You traveled a lot of places, man. I'm still recovering. Voice, um, yeah. So when I fully recovered, we can revisit that question. But right now, we want to give it a chance to breathe. The first one was 34 years ago. And I'd like to think of it more as an event than as just this year's set of Cosmos yeah. episodes. You know, I, as though it's just some drama that we just come up with some more drama next year, you know? Not, not that there's a shortage of content. The universe is vast, and the history of science is deep. So that's not the, the fear factor here. It's just we want this to sink in. Uh, how exciting, you know, I know as an astrophysicist, you looked up to Carl and, um, you know, his wife said that you're the only person she could imagine filling in footsteps. Is it crazy to kind of know that you watched this and looked up to it and now you're hosting it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's not so much crazy because I've known well before the original Cosmos that I was interested in the universe. But what, it is an awesome responsibility. And, That's then, and then lastly, um, you know, what was the one episode you enjoyed the most? Was there a pertinent piece of, a, per, a specific piece of science that got out there that you were really excited you got to share? Or was there an episode that was near and dear to your heart? Episode, I think the episode, I forgot the exact number, is it 10 or 9, where we talk about lead in the environment and how it was discovered, because that's like recent, his, that's like relatively recent history. Yeah. Recent enough history so that plenty of people are alive today that remembered it. And it's, the, it's what led to the legislation that got lead banned from the environment and removed from gas tanks. And that trajectory that these newly emergent and discovered truths went through to become embraced and accepted by the public is a story told in Cosmos. And a lot of it, we, we want you to think about, is, is any of that going on today? Or are we blind to emergent scientific truths that need to be on the table, that we can't just stick your head in the sand and ignore. So that, I think, became a story that I even learned about uh, by doing it, and a story that serves as proxy for so much else that we see going on in the world today. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on the Emmy nomination. Oh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. I, I, then I learned, like, you do TV and then maybe there's an Emmy nomination. Yeah. I, I, we didn't, I, I didn't think Emmy because I'm an academic. That's, yeah. you know, I feel we have Nobel Prizes and things. We got, all, we got our own issues with prizes. Uh, so, but here, I, I'm, it's an affirmation that we weren't the only ones that thought that, that maybe we did a good job. So it's, it's a good feeling. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.